What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Predict the Prem, where me and my brother go head to head in predicting Premier League outcomes. And we have scores as well at the moment. The scores is 303 to 325 in my favour. And the way the scoring works, it's five points for a completely correct scoreline, one point for a correct result. And the star man, once you pick that man, you can't pick them again for the rest of the season. Five points for a goal, three points for an assist. Let's get straight into it, starting off with Leeds against Newcastle big game at Ellen Road this weekend to kick us off on the Premier League action. I've gone for 3-1 to Newcastle. Sim's gone for 2-2 two, two here. Why 2-2? Two, two? Yeah, I'm feeling that um, Leeds' first home game under Sam Allardyce, look, it's really do or die. They're going to give absolutely everything in this game. And I think the fact that they got a new manager, there's an air of unpredictability about how they're going to play in this game. and Maybe that'll bamboozle Newcastle a bit. Obviously, Newcastle coming off um, a poor result of having lost to Arsenal, albeit they did have a fairly good performance, but mm. um, it was a it was a poor result. And look, with Champions League, it's not. Well, I guess it's not completely wrapped up just yet. Obviously, they're going to want a result, but um, I have, I have, look. I think Leeds at home in this relegation battle. I think it can you can kind of pull some weird results at this time of the season. I think this is going to be one of them. I have backing Leeds to get a draw, two two. Yeah, I was thinking about it to be honest, but. I, I've sided with Newcastle because of that loss against Arsenal. I think that they're going to want a reaction from that. Although it was a good performance, but in terms of the result, I think they're going to want a reaction from that. Leeds, obviously, have been shocking uh, for the past, well, ages, to be honest. Big Sam's come in. Didn't seem to change anything against Man City in the last uh, game, but it was against Man City. Um, but I think Newcastle, because they haven't been in this like phase in the top four for so long now I think that they're not going to give it up until it's completely mathematically secured in my opinion so I think that Newcastle the quality will shine through and I think 3-1 to Newcastle on the day next up Aston Villa against Spurs Sims gone 1-1 I've gone for 1-0 to Spurs I think that um, if we do go for the same back line which I imagine us doing so with Emerson on the right Romero in the middle and Longley or Davis on the left I do feel that the defensive solidity will be there and I think on the other end we'll be good enough to get a goal or so Aston Villa have gone off the boil a bit in, in recent weeks so I think we can sneak a win here yeah, um, I, I think we can go there with a bit more confidence of our defensive back line. I do think we're going to go for the same back line, but I don't know if it'll be good enough for a win. I think Villa, despite the fact that have been in poor form, one win in their last four, they're still going to come into this knowing that they need a result to snatch that last European place. I think they're going to give everything, and I think they're still a good enough team to cause us problems. So I think, obviously, with our quality, we're good enough to get a goal, but I don't know if we're going to be good enough to win. So 1-1. One, one. Next up, Chelsea against Nottingham Forest. Frank Lampard got his first win in a second stint as Chelsea manager. Nottingham Forest had a really important win last time out um, at home to Southampton in a 4-3 win. And I think that win um, for Chelsea might give them a bit of confidence going into this game against a Nottingham Forest side who are very poor away from home. And yeah, they are fighting the drop, though. I think they will earn their points at home uh, for the remainder of the season and probably make themselves safe. But I think Chelsea will take all three points. I don't think it's going to be a foregone conclusion, though. So I've gone for a bit of a tight scoreline 2-1. Yeah, I've gone for 3-1. I think the win would have lifted a lot of the pressure, not off Lampard. And you can, I think you saw the relief on his face after getting that first win after a run of lots of losses. So I think that... Um Maybe Chelsea could play with a bit more freedom, especially in front of the home crowd. For Forrest's um, away results have been pretty dreadful throughout the season. And well, I know they've got good results, so look, that will maybe um, give them a bit more confidence going into this game. But I think Chelsea do have superior quality um, to Nottingham Forest. And if they're going to be playing with a bit more freedom, I think that goals could come with it. So I've gone for 3-1 Chelsea. And moving on to the next game, Crystal Palace against Bournemouth. Soon has gone for 3-1 to Palace. I've gone for 2-2 here, and I think both of these teams might just cancel each other out. Bournemouth, um, they're on good form. They really are on good form, and their um, Gary O'Neill's done a really good job there. They look to be safe now, so maybe there is a chance of them putting taking their foot off the gas a little bit. But Crystal Palace, I mean, they are playing really well as, as well at the moment, albeit did lose to Spurs last time out. I mean, I couldn't really split these sides with the way they're both performing, to be honest. So that's why I went 2-2. Yeah, I've gone for home advantage. I think Palace in their last home game against West Ham, they um, did play really well and created lots of chances. I think Bournemouth now being safe, it might open them up a bit. I think I do see a bit of an open game. And if it is an open game, I do back Palace's superior attacking talent to come out on top. And uh, especially defensively as well, I do think they're more solid so 
I think Eze, um, Olis and Zaha should have some joy in this game, in my opinion. So 3-1 to Palace. Next up, Manchester United against Wolves. Both of us going for the exact same scoreline here in 1-0 to Manchester United. And I think um, the home form of Man United are going to see them through on this game, especially as Wolves have been dreadful on the road so far this season. Well, all season, to be honest, and especially of late. Uh, Lopetegui has got a tune out of Wolves, but it mainly has been at Molyneux, so I've sided with Man United just to sneak past it here 1-0 yeah I've gone for a 1-0 unconvincing win United were, have been really poor in their past uh, two games to be honest but both have been away from home they do seem to just about get over the line and get the job done at home um, I don't see it being a, a brilliant performance just because they may be a bit low on confidence right now Man United but I think they will have enough to sneak past this Wolves side so 1-0 and it'll go a long way to getting Champions League football for them that win Next up, Southampton against Fulham. And we've gone for very different scorelines here. Sims has gone for 4-1 to Fulham. I've gone for 3-2 to Southampton. Why 4-1? Yeah, I think that Fulham, um, you saw against Leicester, they've definitely let a bit loose against a Leicester side who were fighting for their lives. And I think that really played into Fulham's hands a bit with uh, Leicester all going all out for the win and Fulham just picked them off. I think Southampton know they're pretty much down. That if they, if they don't win this game, I think mathematically they are down. And even if they do win, they might mathematically be down anyway, um, considered, depending on other results. But um, I think, um, I do see maybe Southampton having a, a good start. But if, if Fulham get back in this game I do envisage their heads dropping and Fulham like with nothing to play for I can see them um, having a bit of fun out there like they did against Leicester so I've gone for a sapping 4-1 win for Fulham and it will send Southampton down yeah this is a really interesting game of football to be honest in terms of mentality uh, at the end of the season I mean Southampton all pretty much are down to be honest and I feel like because of that situation the shackles will be off a little bit for Southampton I know they they're just like falling away in games every single game but I did see a bit of life for them away at Nottingham Forest in the last game so maybe they can take that into this game um, and just you know have a good end to the season when they know they're going down Fulham on the other hand yeah they had a really impressive display against Leicester last time out but I mean they're really Jacqueline Hyde at the moment I mean they won last game they lost the previous three games they won the game before I mean you don't really know what Fulham are going to turn up so I envisage a game with a lot of goals but I'm just siding with Southampton just to take all three points here Next up is Brentford against West Ham and we've both gone for Brentford wins. I've gone for 2-1 to Brentford and I think uh, West Ham uh, will have one eye on European football on this one with the big semi-final for them coming up and I think Brentford at home are always quite a safe bet so I've gone for 2-1 to Brentford. Yeah, I'm envisaging a lot of changes for West Ham. Um with uh, safety pretty much secure um, after their win against Man United. Um, they're going to be fully concentrated on that semi-final. I think that's really going to play on their mind. So I'm envisaging uh, with changes, I think Brentford should be um, all right in this game, even with the clean sheets. I've gone for 2-0. Next up, Everton against Manchester City. Both of us gone for Man City wins, but only just Sim going for 1-0. Yeah, 1-0. I think it's going to be a tight game. Again, I think City will make a few changes, albeit um, they're obviously the, they're still in the title race, so they can't. no slip-ups are affordable for them. Um, but even with changes, they're still going to put out a really, really strong team. But Everton, full of confidence after battering Brighton 5-1 in midweek. So I do see them like putting in a very strong performance at home and, and um, really come flying out the traps and being really defensively solid. But I do see City f f uh, breaking them down and finding that moment of quality. Um, and I don't see Everton hurting City like they hurt Brighton. So I've gone for 1-0 to City. Yeah, I've gone for 2-1 to City. A bit of a similar thinking, to be honest. But I do think Everton will get a goal. I mean, they looked so good on the break against Brighton, opening up, them up uh, at will, to be honest, with Decore uh, and everyone else that was involved. Um, Calvert-Lewin as well. I mean, Man City... They are just about getting over games in the Premier League, slightly over um, Fulham, and there was another one in there as well. I can't remember who it was against. But, Leeds. Uh, Leeds, yeah, exactly. So I think it will be a similar game of football here, but I think quality will shine through in the end, albeit I do think uh, Everton will have a strong performance. So I've gone for 2-1 to Manchester City. Next up is the other one in the title race, is Arsenal against Brighton. Both of us gone for 2-2. Two, two. And um, Brighton are actually, have actually won their last two visits to the Emirates, uh, to be fair. And I think that both of them have um, will have a point to prove. Arsenal had a really impressive victory out at St. James's Park last time out. And they maybe think there is still life in this title race. 
Uh, Brighton, on the other hand, they had an absolutely embarrassing defeat to Everton 5-1 on the day. And I think Deserby came out and he says, you're going to see the real Brighton at the Emirates next week. And I think we're going to see a really good game of football. And I think Brighton are going to be at their absolute best. Um, so I can't split them really at 2-2. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm feeling uh, similar things. I think um, De Zerbi will look. Five-one was a really uncharacteristic result for Brighton. They're, they're going to want to put that right. They don't want to um, make this um, before, like that that result um, go into sliding form, especially with European places up for grabs. Arsenal will, re help, will have regained their confidence after that really good win against Newcastle. I do see a really open game of football. Both teams need the win. I don't think a draw helps either team. So I do see. Um, both teams really going a hammer and tong to to open up the other the opposition, and again, yeah, I think it's going to be a really good game of football. So I've gone for a two-two draw. All right, and last but not least, Leicester against Liverpool Monday night football. Both of us gone for Liverpool wins. Surprise, surprise. I mean, Leicester are really not doing well at the moment. Um, they look like they're destined for the drop the way they're playing, to be honest. And it's crazy to think about with the squad that they have. Liverpool, on the other hand, they really have started to click into gear this season. Top four looks a real possibility um, for Liverpool. And um, I think they're going to carry on their winning ways. And I've gone for 3-1. Their front line is looking absolute dynamite at the moment. Again, um, a draw doesn't help either team. So uh, I know Leicester got absolutely battered against Fulham 5-3 in the end. So they're going to have to be wary about giving away a lot of silly goals that they did uh, last time out. But they also know they need to win. They can't really draw this game. So I, with, Mad with, the, with the quality they have, I do see with the way Liverpool play, Leicester having some joy on the counter-attack. But Liverpool are on fire at the moment. They're scoring goals, albeit they did only win the last two 1-0. But I think they're, they're, they're playing with a lot of confidence. They're getting over the line in many games. They're going for that top four. And I think they'll have too much quality for this Leicester team. So I've gone for a 3-2 win for Liverpool. All right, well, let's go into the star men. Sim has gone for Raheem Sterling. Why came, Raheem Sterling? Um, he came off the bench against um, the, in their last game against Bournemouth, got a really good assist and was looking really sharp. So I'm backing him to start this game. At home to Forest, I think Chelsea will have maybe not a new lease of life, but maybe the shackles will be lifted a bit after that run of defeats, a bit of improved um, uh, morale around the around the states. Um, around the uh, stadium and I think Sterling will be the beneficiary of that and I back him to uh, get some goals so I've gone for Raheem Sterling I've gone for Carlos Alcaraz of Southampton and um, I've backed Southampton to win 3-2 uh, at home to Fulham and the last couple of times I've watched Southampton against uh, Nottingham Forest against Arsenal I've been really impressed with this guy uh, 20 years of age he seems to know where the net is he joined in January um, I think from South America if I believe and he um, he's come in and scored four goals got one assist that's a 20 year old I think that's really impressive to be honest especially for a team like Southampton who are rooted at the bottom of the league so I've gone for Alcaraz as my star man and Sim's gone for Raheem Sterling. That is our Predict the Prem for this week. Let me know in the comment section below what your predictions are, who you think is going to come out on top. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, 